Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theatre. Opening on Broadway at the New Amsterdam Theatre, January 10th, 1928. Rosalie, with music by George Gershwin and Sigmund Romberg. Book by William Anthony McGuire and Guy Bolton. Lyrics by P.G. Wodehouse and Ira Gershwin and produced by Florin Ziegfeld Jr. Featured one of the era's biggest stars, Marilyn Miller, with Frank Morgan, best known today as the Wizard of Oz himself in the supporting cast. How can a musical with two composers, two lyricists, and two book writers still be a success? If you're Florin Ziegfeld and you've hired your favorite star and ex-mistress Marilyn Miller and added George and Ira Gershwin plus P.G. Wodehouse to the mix, you at least have a chance. And that's what happened with Rosalie, a fanciful story of a princess who falls in love with a commoner, a typical 1920s musical comedy scenario. When Sigmund Romberg informed Ziegfeld that he could not complete the entire score in the allotted time, and Wodehouse was occupied on another show with Rudolf Frimmel, the Gershwins were brought in and proceeded to fill their portion of the score with cast-offs from their previous shows. Only two other Gershwin musicals, Lady Be Good and Of The I Sing, had longer Broadway runs than Rosalie, proving that many cooks are not always the cause of a spoiled broth. MGM produced a film version of Rosalie in 1937. The movie follows the story of the musical but replaces most of the score with new songs by Cole Porter. MGM's top tap dancer at the time, Eleanor Powell, was cast as the princess, opposite Nelson Eddy as Dick Thorpe, Lieutenant Fay in the stage version. Frank Morgan reprised his Broadway role as King Frederick, known as King Cyril in the stage version. Also appearing in the film were Ray Bolger, Edna May Oliver, Ilona Massey, and Reginald Owen. Here on the December 17th, 1951 episode of The Railroad Hour are the stars Nadine Connor and Gordon McRae with Norma Varden, Herb Butterfield, and Theodore Von Eltz in Rosalie. Ladies and gentlemen, The Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. The Association of American Railroads invites you to hear the great Sigmund Romberg, George Gertwin musical success, Rosalie, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Nadine Connor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another thrilling musical play is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Nadine Connor is the Princess Rosalie, and I am Lieutenant Dick Fay, who at this very moment is making the first non-stop supersonic jet plane flight from the United States to the Kingdom of Romanza. Shout! Shout! 
Princess Rosalie. Well, don't worry, dear. She'll be here. The American has landed already. He'll be arriving here in the middle of the square any minute. Well, calmly, calmly, my dear. But what will he think if the entire royal family isn't on hand to welcome him? I wish I could fly across the Atlantic Ocean in six hours. It would be much more fun than being a king. Who's that coming into the square? There's only one thing that can bring that many handsome soldiers together. Rosalie. Hand kissing? That's just something she learned last year when she went to Paris. Rosalie hasn't been the same since she made that trip. She's altogether too interested in men. Nonsense. How can she get romantic with all those good-looking hussars to keep her from falling in love? When I leave my regiment bolder, just like those knights of old of whom the poet tells. At moonlight parties open out on the dancing floor, they cast are very important to us at this moment, Rosalie. Oh, but America is so terribly far away. We don't want to offend this young aviator fellow. <laughs> I'll be nice to him, Father. What's his name? His name? I'm sure he must have one. But it seems to have slipped my mind. His name is Lieutenant Fay. Richard Fay. Not Richard Fay. Rosalie, what's the Look, matter? There he comes. Your Majesty, our guest of honor, the intrepid aviator, Lieutenant Dick Fay. Well, young man, welcome to the kingdom of Romance. I have a speech here, the Chancellor prepared for me, but I can't see... Oh, it's somewhere here. I know I had it. I... Your Majesties, the gracious welcome of your people has said more than any words can convey. Say, well, that's very good. Why can't I ever think of things like that to say? Well, allow me to present the Princess Rose... Uh, Rosalie, wh wh where are you now? Where did that child go? I've been looking forward to meeting the princess, Your Majesty. I've already met one of Romance's citizens in Paris last year. She was the main reason why I made this flight. I wanted to meet her again. Well, that's very romantic, isn't it? Uh, who is this girl? She wouldn't tell me. I know she's the most exciting person in the world. I know everything about her, except her name. Uh, well, maybe you'll happen across her during the festival. Festival? Yes, we're having one in your honor. Dancing in the streets, all that sort of thing. Over here, we have festivals at the drop of a hat. Well, that's, that's wonderful, Your Majesty. If you don't mind, I'm going to look around and see if I can find that girl. Beating and hearts beating too. But be careful, careful what you do. We 
come to Romanza after all. I promised I would, didn't I? I've been searching for you ever since the dancing began. And now that I've found you, you've got to tell me who you are. <laughs> My costume should tell you. I am a peasant girl for today. Oh, that's, that's not enough. Well, what else would you have me say? What else? When your eyes look into mine, there's something they would say. Is it no yes? Surely you can guess. Look again and quickly, then your doubts will fly away. If their secret you turn. Just three little words I sigh for, crazy about them. Three little words I die for, can't live without them. Say so, change the gray sky to a gay sky ever blue. Say so, I shall say so. Last year in Paris, I've been in love with you. I want you to go back to America with me. Tell me that you'll come, that, that you love me. Oh, I don't have to tell you a word, Dick. There's a better way. Lieutenant Bay, you are the guest of Romanza, but our husband can hardly extend to the lips of our princess. Princess? I thought you were just a peasant girl. Oh, I can't help it if I'm a princess. Of course not. You couldn't help playing a little joke on a dumb army pilot. Oh, Dick, please. Rosalie, I command you to return to the palace immediately. Oh, Dick, listen to me, please. Your Majesty, I request permission to take off for my return flight as soon as my ship is ready. <laughs> Lieutenant Fay, I'm sorry about this uh, misunderstanding with the Princess Rosalie. I, I do not know your princess, sir. I met a peasant girl from Romanza. And it seems she doesn't exist. Oh, Dick. Have I your permission to leave, sir? I must return to my post at West Point. You may leave, Lieutenant. Thank you. My compliments, Your Majesty. Princess Rosalie, it was an honor to meet you at last in your native setting. Goodbye. Dick. Oh, there, there, my child. Oh, Father. He's gone. I think maybe you'll see him again. Oh, no, I won't. He's gone for good.
just a moment. The other day, a friend of mine said to me, Marvin, I noticed that on the railroad hour, you say the railroads bring us most of the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the fuel we burn, and all the other things we use in our daily life. Now, he said, I've also heard it said that trucks handle more tons of freight than any other kind of transportation, which is right. Well, that's an easy question to answer. You see, trucks are mighty useful for some hauls and for specialized jobs. And trucks do handle a vast number of tons of freight, a lot of it, at the beginning and end of rail hauls. But when it comes to ton miles, that's tons of freight moved over the miles that stretch between our towns and cities. Why, there the railroads haul more freight, more miles, than all other forms of transportation put together, and do it at a lower average charge. Indeed, counting both tons and miles, the railroads haul almost five times as much freight to and from and between towns and cities as all the motor trucks in the country. In a recent report following investigation of land and water transportation in the United States, a Senate subcommittee said that these railroads, and I quote, constitute the backbone of our national transportation system. They carry freight which cannot be moved by any other carrier or combination of carriers. End of quotation. In World War II, for example, the railroads carried more than 90% of all military freight and provided 97% of the transportation for the organized movements of the armed forces throughout the United States of America. And in these critical times, the nation once again looks to the railroads to fill the stepped-up traffic demands of our defense program. That's why it's so important that the railroads be able to continue their billion-dollar-a-year program of expansion and improvement, a program that depends on rates that will bring the railroads earnings adequate for the job they are doing. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater producing artistic associate Frankie Leo Bennett. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. Now here's act two of Rosalie, starring Gordon McRae as Lieutenant Dick Fay and Nadine Connor as the Princess Rosalie. <laughs> pretty disappointing when you find out that a girl you've been in love with, a girl you hope to marry, is really a princess, as unattainable as the moon. So I was glad to get away from the kingdom of Romanza and get back to the good old lights and glitter of New York City. When I went to Romanza, I heard many a serenade. Fellows there sing a stanza when they're Lieutenant Fay reporting his audit, sir. Lieutenant, I have a special assignment for you. This afternoon, the military academy at West Point is playing host to the royal family of Romanza. What did you say? You are at attention, sir. Yes, I certainly am, sir. The king has asked specifically that you command the guard of honor. Oh, Major, Major, please don't, don't make me entertain the Princess Rosa. These are orders. You're a soldier, sir. Yours not to reason why. Yours but to do. I know. Or die. Lieutenant Fay, it's a pleasure to see you again. Your Majesty, 
May I extend the welcome of the point to yourself and the queen and... You uh, remember my daughter, Princess Rosalie? (laughs) Your Highness. Lieutenant. And now, if you please, Lieutenant, we would like to be taken to our quarters. I'm sure the guard can escort you there, Mother. I would like Lieutenant Bay to show me the grounds. I understand there's a walk known as Lover's Lane. Is that correct, Lieutenant? Well, really, Rosalie. Now, my dear, let the child do as she pleases. Run along, Rosalie. Just be back in time for the review. I will, Father. Lieutenant, do you mind? From here, Your Highness, you can see one of the battlefields of the American Revolution. It is known as... Dick, do you really think I made this trip all the way from around Manza to hear a lecture on the historic landmarks of the Hudson River? Why did you come here? To tell you that I'm sorry. To tell you that I meant every word I said to you. What? Yes. Oh, my darling. Rosalie, do do you love me? Oh, yes. Well, then why didn't you say so? I just did. Yeah, you did. You really did. (laughs) Yes, Dick, I really did. Oh, gee, oh, joy. The birds are singing. Because why? Because I am in love. Oh, gee, oh, joy. The bells are ringing. Because why? Because I am in love. So happy, oh gee, oh joy, the birds are singing, because why, because I am in love, oh gee, oh joy, the birds are singing, because why, because I am in love, oh gee, oh joy, the bells are ringing, because why, because news for you. Well, I'm sure it can wait until your father reviews the changing of the guard, or whatever they call it over here. Oh, no, it can't possibly wait. Dick and I are sure of it now. We're in love. We have been ever since we met in Paris. Your Majesties, I I want to marry Rosalie. Well... Never. Oh, now, really, my dear. Rosalie is a princess. Someday she will inherit the throne of Romanza. As long as Rosalie is a princess, I shall never give my consent. Get up your soapbox, Mother, and let me get to the bottom of this thing. Lieutenant, do you really uh, love my daughter? With all my heart. And I suppose you feel the same way, Rosalie. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Well, I'm afraid your mother's right. As long as you're a princess, uh, Rosalie, you and Dick can't get married. But But Father, how do you think so? Now, hold your horses. I've got a plan. Have you heard anything from your father? Oh, I don't know where he is. He's disappeared. Well, I suppose he's getting ready to go back home to Romanza. The ship sails tomorrow. Well, then this may be our last loss together. My eyes of gold, the lanterns glow. Thank you. 
gentlemen of the Academy and guests, His Royal Majesty, the King of Romanza. Thank you, thank you very much, but you uh, didn't give me my complete title. I'm sorry. Uh, Don't be sorry, I'm not. Uh, Starting right now, I'm my Royal Majesty, the ex-King of Romanza. Shush, shush. Uh, Let me finish. Uh, For years now, I've been the monarch of the most progressively uh, backward kingdom in Europe. And I've been getting sick and tired of it. I think the kingdom has, too. So I called up my prime minister on the transatlantic phone to give him my abdication. Oh, Oh, why? Why did you do it? Well, mother, you said Rosalie couldn't get married as long as she was a princess. But she's no princess if her father isn't a king. Oh, I don't see why these two young people can't go right ahead and uh, get hitched. Oh, Father. Thank you, Your Majesty. Uh, No more Majesty, boy. Just call me Dad. But now, where will we go? What can we do for a living? Simple. I'm going to open up a restaurant. Yeah, I hear there's a lot more money in that than there is in the king business. Hey, uh, Your Majesty, will you give a soldier a special rating on a wedding breakfast? Oh, gee, oh, joy. Birds are singing. Because why? Because I am. Nadine Carnival will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, our sincere thanks to Norma Varden, Herb Butterfield, Theodore Von Eltz, and our entire cast. Rosalie with music by Sigmund Romberg and George Gershwin, book and lyrics by P.G. Wodehouse, Ira Gershwin, and William Anthony McGuire, was dramatized for The Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. For over two and a half years... The Senate Subcommittee on Domestic Land and Water Transportation has been studying America's transportation system. Speaking of the particular problems of the railroads, the subcommittee says, and I quote, freight charges constitute a relatively small and decreasing portion of national income. Although transportation charges have increased in absolute amount, the proportion of such charges to the total value of commodities transported has actually decreased by almost half. In short, transportation revenues have lagged far behind increases in prices and wages generally. End of quotation. And now here again is the charming Nadine Connor. It was fun being romanced in Romancer, Gordon. Well, we want to make love to you again the first week in January, Nadine, in an entirely different mood... It's another great Romberg operetta, however. Blossom time. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, we're going to have a special Christmas program, Nadine. The Happy Prince, set to the great music of Christmas time. And Lucille Norman will be our guest. Sounds like a wonderful Christmas Eve present. I'll put it on my listening list. Good. All aboard? Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying Goodbye. <laughs> was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC.
preceding transcribed. Stay tuned for the telephone hour next on NBC. Today's star, Nadine Connors' radio debut came in 1933. After passing an audition, she was given a role on California Melodies. On radio, she was the featured singer on Shell Chateau and was a member of the cast of Showboat, a series inspired by the Broadway hit musical. She also appeared on The Voice of Firestone and with stars such as Bing Crosby and Nelson Eddy before embarking on a musical tour with Gordon McRae, which led to her appearance in today's program. By the end of 1939, Nadine Connor was embarking on a career in classical opera. She made her professional debut in 1940 as Marguerite in Vladimir Rosing's Los Angeles production of Faust. She sang with the Los Angeles Opera from 1939 to 1941, the year in which she began her career at the Metropolitan Opera, making her debut as Pamina in The Magic Flute. Today's co-star, Norma Varden, acted in repertory theater and made her West End debut in the play The Wandering Jew in 1920. From Shakespeare to farce, she appeared in live theater from 1929 to 1933, when she began to appear in British films, usually in haughty upper-class roles. Varden's English film roles led to offers from Hollywood, and she moved there at the start of World War II, beginning a long career of playing character and supporting roles. Notable films Varden appeared in include Casablanca in 1942, National Velvet in 1944, Witness for the Prosecution in 1957, The Sound of Music in 1965, and Dr. Doolittle in 1967. Theaters across the country need your support now more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber